Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Brown, and today we're going to be talking about why adding more test phases into your software project may not reduce the number of bugs. Now, maybe you've experienced this yourself. Perhaps you've put a new test phase in, expecting to see the number of bugs in the ship product go down, but you're disappointed when you find the application seems just as buggy as ever. And you've wondered, why is that? That's what we're going to be looking at. But before then, let's whisk ourselves off to Munich. We're staying at the Hotel Bayerischerhof, where they hold a magnificent jazz festival every summer. Now, imagine the festival has just finished and you're making your way to the airport. There are two taxis outside. They're the same make, same model, identical in every respect apart from one. One taxi is fitted with ABS anti-lock braking and the other isn't. Now, obviously you want to get to the airport as safely as possible. So which taxi do you choose for a safer ride? The surprising answer is it will make absolutely no difference. So why is this? Well, there was a three year study of a taxi fleet in Munich. This taxi fleet was unusual. The taxis were identical except that half were fitted with ABS braking and half were not. Now, the purpose of the study was to show the safety benefits of ABS braking. So the researchers were very surprised when they found no difference in the accident rate of the two taxi types. Intrigued, they took some secret rides in the taxis and covertly monitored the behavior of the drivers. They found that the ABS taxi drivers were driving faster braking later, cornering harder, tailgating, making late lane changes, and generally doing all the things that I would do if I were a taxi driver trying to hustle a bit of extra money. The safety benefits of ABS braking were being consumed by the taxi drivers in pursuit of a higher priority goal, to earn money. This is the Peltzman effect, sometimes known as risk compensation it's a tendency to take greater risks when we perceive that safety has increased. And it's not just taxi drivers who are influenced by the Peltzman effect. You may be surprised to learn that giveaway signs, stop signs and traffic lights do not reduce the level of accidents at a traffic junction. However, what they do achieve is they increase the traffic flow for a given level of safety. Skydivers even have their own special rule. It's Booth's rule number two. Booth was involved in improving skydiving equipment, but he noticed that as equipment became safer, skydivers changed their behavior, taking more risks, with the result that fatalities per parachute jump remained largely unchanged, despite huge advances in equipment safety. Now, the Peltzman effect is not inevitable. Certain conditions must be present if they're not present, the Peltzman effect doesn't occur. So the first condition is that safety is not the number one goal of the decision maker. And we can see that for many taxi drivers, earning fares would be a higher goal. Now, as a passenger, you may think safety should come higher and the taxi driver shouldn't consume your safety benefits. Well, that's too bad. You're not making the decisions here. Also, you can see a parent driving their young child may have very different priorities and not consume that safety benefit. So people are different. The second condition that must be present is that the benefit is tradable. And we can see the taxi driver can easily trade those benefits by driving faster. The third condition is the decision maker needs to be aware the benefit is available to trade. If the taxi drivers didn't know their vehicles had ABS braking, they wouldn't have changed their behavior. Are the Peltzman conditions present for us in software development? Well, the first condition is the benefit is not the number one goal. So is this true? It's difficult to get anybody to admit that quality is not their number one goal. But if you look at what people do rather than what they say, you can see higher priority goals and quality. For example, delivering something. So yes, the first condition is true. 
The second condition, are those benefits tradable? And the answer is yes, there are lots of people who can trade those benefits. BAs, developers, testers, and so on. All these people can trade off either in pursuit of the primary project goal or their own personal goals. So the benefit is tradable and the second condition is true. The third condition, do people know the benefit is available? Well, usually when we put a process in, we have to request or even compete for resources. So it's really a secret. And so lots of people know it's there. So in conclusion, yes, all three Peltzman conditions are present and they're present in spades. In fact, it's surprising that adding a quality process ever leads to any quality improvement. Now, what can we do about this? Well, the first thing we should ask is, why is this even a problem? Because if the number one goal is not quality, but delivery or something else, and putting this process in has helped us achieve that goal, why on earth are we bothered? We should be looking at this in a totally different way. We should regard this as a good thing because this quality process is an enabler. So why is it a problem? The answer is it's a problem because it needs managing and we're not managing it. And this leads to three further problems. The first problem is one of expectation management. To gain resources for that quality process, we needed to put together a business case. In other words, we made a promise. We promised that if given this resource, quality would improve. We got the resource, but quality didn't improve. Now that's a problem for us. We've promised something, but we haven't delivered on our promise. Now, it doesn't matter that we delivered something more valuable. Firstly, we're being measured on what we promised. And secondly, the benefit is enjoyed by others in the software process. And they won't admit that the new quality process allowed them to change their behavior because it means that they reduced the quality of their own work. Imagine going to the taxi driver and saying, you got there quicker because you took more risks. Knowing ABS braking would get you out of trouble. That taxi driver would never admit that. The second problem is that we're not taking the benefit in a controlled way. So we're not taking it in the optimum place. All software processes have bottlenecks. We should take the benefit at the bottleneck where it will do the most good. But if it's taken ad hoc, this won't happen. The third problem is that we may inadvertently consume the benefit more than once. When we put a process in, many people know it's been put in and each may change their behavior. So we could end up in a paradox where we add a quality process, but quality goes down. So before you go running to management, asking for resources to add a new quality process, promising in return that quality will improve, ask yourself, will the Peltzman effect consume those benefits? If it will, be careful what you promise. If quality isn't going to improve, but the team can achieve other more important goals, then say so. You will be judged better for it. But what if we really do want to improve quality? How can we do this? What we need to do is alter the relative importance of quality in our decision making. Okay, but how do we do that? Well, to answer that, you need to know, how do we make a decision? We've now come to an entirely different topic, one which we don't have time to explore now. In another session, we'll look at how we make such decisions. We use a heuristic. It's known as the effect heuristic. You've encountered this before. It's your gut feel. It makes all the most important decisions in your life, and it really is a most brilliant tool. However, it does have some serious problems when we try to use it to make decisions in the modern world. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again.